Greetings and salutations, ladies and germs, boys and girls. Today, we are finally upgrading the pond once again by adding new fish, new plants, and of course, it's your host with the most, Paul Plant 2, reminding you that Earth is my planet. Earth is my planet. So that is right, guys. Two months ago, I installed this backyard aquatic ecosystem. A month ago, I updated it by adding a couple of wild bluegill, and unfortunately, in that episode, I did lose one of those fish. Now, if you guys haven't seen the first two installments of my backyard pond series, definitely click this little link somewhere above my head and catch up on those videos. But today, we are not only upgrading this environment with some more fish, we're also gonna throw in some aquatic plants as well. So in the month since I last updated you guys on this pond, I've done a little bit of fishing and a lot of plant hunting. So without further ado, let's roll back the hands of time and get to catching some fish to throw in this bit. All right guys, so here we are live in the field trying to get a second fish to put in the pond after one had tragically passed away as y'all saw. We're with the expert, YKP, young clipper, Sir Charles Garza, the, uh, <laughs> the resident fishing expert on the channel. And I dug up some worms from the garden. So we're gonna go ahead and cast these guys out in this beautiful, scenic, I guess sewer storm rain runoff system and network. And we're gonna see what's in here. I mean, just don't mind the trash, the soda cans. We're gonna try and find a couple more species to possibly introduce into the pond. But this is where we're at. So let's cast and see what we get. Yes, sir. Last of the worms. One cast, another species. Is it possible? We've been getting our, our worms sucked up. What? Every cast and no fish. Got it! Let's fucking go. Oh, that shit looks clean, boy. Oh my God. We've been out here for a minute, guys. And by a minute, I mean we had just a fragment of a worm left. Look at this guy, bro. Bro, this bluegill is clean as fuck. So normally, like like your bluegill, your bluegill doesn't have these colors because it's not big enough yet. Uh -huh. But that's why they're called bluegills, because of that right there. Jeez. Look at the magnificence. Good lord, man. That nice. A nice golden hue on the bottom. It's a beautiful fish. Hey, that's God art right there, baby. Guys, man, shout out my guy Young Clipper one time, man. <laughs> this guy. It was a real struggle. Y'all saw this happen in probably like 45 seconds. Yeah. But we've been in here probably 45 damn minutes, bro. Just fishing this guttural wasteland of a water system. God, just birds, laughing gulls, just making a mockery of us. Red-winged blackbirds just ing on the freaking lines. Wow, I'm gonna have to keep that dude well fed. That is a big body. Guys, speaking of big body, look at this. I chunked in the grub and this dude had some big body feeding habits. With a vicious quickness, he hit the grub and watch him slurp this down like he's a cast member of Lady and the Tramp. Absolutely insane. And then look at this mating behavior. I don't know if these guys were actually trying to court. This dude was like taking the smaller bluegill to the prom or if he literally is just the class bully. Either way, this was some unique behavior that I saw and then you guys can tell he broke off and just started ramming the smaller bluegill with all of his might. He even kind of came out of the water so i'm not exactly sure what this is all i know is the big bluegill took over the dominant and best territory of the pond which was the half broken pot but y'all can see these dudes are straight exposed and need some cover so it's time to grab some plants anyways guys yeah we're going down this creek side because i have seen some water plants in here which i assume are natives i actually don't know the species i'll only know by digging my hand in there and grabbing them but i want more pond cover i can see there's fish actually snapping up in there i'm hoping not to get bit by ticks or snakes but the dogs always love jumping in the water so i'm gonna go ahead and jump in the water my damn self and try and retrieve some plants i wish i charged my gopro for this but i want to find some really nice um pondscaping 
via the natural creek side. So let's go ahead and hop in here and see what's going on. I'm gonna make sure there are no gators and make sure that there are no snakes, but it's time to get some plants for free. Look at this guy. I'm telling y'all, it's all too natural for them. I gotta find a nice entryway where I don't gotta walk through all this. But yeah, they instantly jump in the, in the water every time we pull up on it. All right guys, so we are deep up in here. <laughs> This is crazy. All right guys, so we are uh, ankle deep in the water. I'm really hoping not to drop my phone. The dogs are traversed to the other side. I managed to grab this weed or whatever it is. I don't wanna call it a weed. I don't wanna be offensive to this water plant, dude. It got feelings too, man. But yeah, I grabbed this guy. I'm gonna go ahead and throw him in my bag and see what else is uh, going on. There's some herons running around. What's crazy is there's a ton of amazing native wildflowers just growing all along the banks. It looks super majestic, but yeah, I could not risk bringing my like $3,000 camera in this water. Nah. All right, so this is what I'm after, man. I need to grab me some of this. I don't even know what it is. I don't know how deep it's lodged, but I really want to grab some of this healthy looking plants. Dude, FML. All right, so we're out of there. Rangers, what I think is stuck on the other side. I don't know what happened, man. This clip went into slow-mo. I think my fat finger slipped and turned my iPhone on 0.25 speed mode. I just tried to fix an editing, but my voice is like slow down and sounds like this. So the whole clip is ruined, but this is one of the plants I grabbed and I'm not gonna keep this clip going. Just know I grabbed a bunch of plants and I'll show them to you guys in a second. All right, so we have the pack loaded up, got the plants sticking out the back, and I just want to highlight some of these plants. This is what I'm saying, man. You have all of these crazy black-eyed Susans. These look absolutely fantastic, and this is what's cool about coming out and at least finding a little slice of nature is because this is exactly what I would want my yard to look like, as crazy as it sounds, but it's just nice to find slices of unadulterated nature like this area was just busting with blooms. This is the native kind of prairie landscape that is found out here in Houston, Texas, or what was before, you know, a bunch of people moved in and shit. But uh, man, it looked amazing a couple weeks ago, just Coryopsis, Black Eyed Susans, just everything was absolutely busting out here. And God, it just looks amazing to find little slices of paradise, if you will. I just wish they did not bring tractors out here and cut all this because it's pretty unnecessary, but who am I, man? I'm, I'm no structural engineer. I'm no civil engineer. I'm just me, Paul Plant 2, trying to entertain you, bruh. Hit the like. Oh, God. Hit the like button. Someone dumped a bunch of crawfish. That is trifling out here. Come on, mama. Foxy, come on. Come on, Ranger. And just like that, we are back outside of the pond area and it's time to identify the plants. Now, what I used to identify plants is the app iNaturalist. You take pictures of plants, animals, fungi, anything in between that is living and it will tell you what it is if you do have good enough pictures. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to unbag some of these plants, take pictures of them and hopefully get an idea of what I did grab because I don't wanna throw anything in the pond that could potentially be a nuisance. So I need to identify it before I chunk it in the sun is setting so we gotta hurry up and get right to it say it ain't so so the first plant man that i just researched took some pics of is this alligator weed and this is native to south america brazil uruguay and it is an invasive species in texas but this thing was lining the banks of the pond so yeah <laughs> do not throw this in other waterways and that's why whenever you grab stuff in the wild it is key to research what it is even if it looks beautiful this plant looks all right it is hollow i may still chunk it in there but as of right now probably not but i am going to do another free pond so in the meantime i'm going to throw this in some water just to keep it alive for the time being um and i might throw it in that pond this is kind of like my my baby this is this is my first pond and it's beautiful. So I don't really want to throw anything that could uh, potentially just take over and form insane clusters. So this guy is unfortunately a no-go for this area as of right now. 
So the next plants we have in this bag, man, this ain't a Lowe's advertisement. It's a state of Texas advertisement. So let's see what's up in here. Foxy, please get out of my face. Thank you. All right, and this is why you double bag because this thing definitely has sprung a leak. All right. <laughs> what a god awful mess, bruh. Watch this be another invasive. Oh, my luck is crazy. Let's see what this is. Move some of this out the way. Need some good pictures of these leaves. Okay, we have a winner, man. This is longleaf pondweed, and despite it being called a weed, it is native to not only the Americas, but Eurasia. A bunch of water beetles and bugs feed off it. And uh, yeah, it has leaves that stay submerged and that obviously float atop the water. So I'm gonna go ahead and plop this dude in the pond. I do have some roots right there in this heap, this mess of uh, leaves. So I'm gonna throw it in and we'll see what happens, man. But I mean, if it spreads like too crazy, I'll just divide it up and put it in the other ponds that will be coming soon. Stay tuned. Let's get it in. All right, so we have it in the pond, man, and I think it is looking pretty good. I mean, it looks a little crazy, but I do need as much cover for the bluegill as possible and for potentially, I almost said potentially, that's not a word, bruh, for potentially any other small fish I throw in, it'll provide good cover. And what's crazy is, I don't know if you guys can really see this, but there are little crustaceans um, that were actually inside of that little long leaf pond weed so i'm gonna go ahead and just chunk this guy in there but that's super cool man so even more habitat for wildlife in the pond aquatic and erotic so now we have the last plant right here which we're gonna try and figure out what this guy is it also has some little roots this may be a floating dude i want to see what's going on with this guy if it's another invasive we'll just save it for like an indoor aquarium setup Okay, so I did my research and that is Eurasian water milf oil or milf oil. I like milf oil better, baby. That's, that's what I cook in. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Anyways, unfortunately that is um, an aquatic plant that is invasive in Texas. So that dude is definitely not going in the pond. It is so invasive in fact that it can block out the sunlight, kill fish and other native water species. And if you wanted to swim in it, which obviously I'm not swimming in this pond, it would be disgusting. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep the MILF oil <laughs> for some aquarium tanks I am gonna set up. But yeah, only one of the three plants is a viable option, but it is definitely a good one. The bluegill is already taking refuge underneath it. And there were like some dragonfly nymphs and other little water creatures swimming around out of that long leaf pond weed and so uh it's definitely cool up in there so i'm excited about that and i will catch you guys in a day or so when the sun is out and we can keep on filming so i can truly show you guys what the ecosystem is looking like with that pond weed and all right guys so it is the next day and i am proud to say the plants are doing decently well at least the one that i added now another plant that i added into the pond is actually this peach glow water lily now one thing i must say about this pond is my dog ranger cannot resist getting in here when it is hot outside like you guys saw them splashing around in the river let alone when it comes to the pond he gets in and he absolutely obliterates it he tears up the plants knocks down the water lilies i put bamboo in here he just yanks it out and it is honestly really hard maintaining this pond when he always is getting in there knocking down the filter knocking down the pump and obviously just causing any and all types of mayhem with that being said man one update i have to tell you guys is when i was out of town camping the caretaker of my pond did not know how to fix the pump when ranger got in the pond and actually disrupted it and one of the original bluegills died so big bertha that we caught is still doing fine because he was able he was larger he was more hardy he was able to survive without as much oxygen coming from the waterfall as i guess the smaller specimen 
but another fish has bit the dust due to this guy. So I'm gonna stop at this point catching wild fish and putting them in here. I'm gonna leave this bluegill by his lonesome. He was bullying the smaller bluegill out the wazoo anyways. And I think once the water level dropped and they were in the same area, the bigger one might have actually murked the smaller bluegill. But I am gonna do another pond, as I mentioned, with some of the other plants, none of these invasive dudes. But I'm gonna do it with the bamboo and I'm gonna put it in the little side patio of my garden where this guy cannot disturb it and climb in it on a regular basis. Now getting to this ecosystem, there's some really cool aspects that have cropped up. So I have a bunch of this frog fruit, which is a native ground cover that has entered into the pond. And what's really cool is when you have a terrestrial plant, they actually can filter the water better than some aquatic species. And you guys can see all of these roots that are actually sucking out all of the nutrients from the water, helping clarify it and make it look really good. So I'm very happy that this frog fruit has dipped in here. It still is surviving, thriving. It's creating a little bit more cover for the bluegill, as are the lily pads, but they are just getting disrupted by ranger left and right. I also added this nice little branch in here. It is a pine branch and there are a couple other types of plants dipping in the water and frogs go on this branch, lay eggs and then escape, which is super sick by climbing back out. Now one of the frogs did lay its eggs. So there are a couple of tadpoles, actually there are hundreds of tadpoles and kind of like a, a sticky mucus that are all conglomerated together next to that branch, which is super cool. And there were hundreds of tadpoles just swimming around the pond, but again, Ranger got in there, knocked off the pump, drained the water, and uh, once I filled it up with some tap water, all those tadpoles did die. So this is the second, the second coming of tadpole Christ, if you will, in the pond. So we're gonna see how they go, and they're providing ample food for my bluegill, but there were like so many, he could not even eat them all. Now, a couple of other plants that are doing super well is obviously my guava, which is covered with baby guavas. I also have my jalapeno plant, which is covered in juicy fat jalapenos. My parsley stays bolting and I have to repeatedly cut it all the way down, but it has filled out nicely. And I'm telling you, the pond water is just like steroids for my plants. And the cilantro has also bolted all the way up. And I'm just letting it go to seed. That way I have wild cilantro growing. And Ranger also took a dump. He defecated all over my cilantro. So that really wasn't an edible option after that incident occurred. So I don't, I don't wanna blame Ranger. He's just doing his dog duties. He's a lab, so he likes water. What can I say? Um, but nevertheless, man, one other plant that I wanna throw in this ecosystem is actually a major filter plant. It's a terrestrial plant and is going to be an elephant ear. So I have a ton of free ones that I found in the trash. I'm gonna strip all the dirt off it and then put it in here with some rocks weighing down the planter. And hopefully Ranger does not yank it out. But at this point, I can't guarantee anything. So that's why I'm not investing any more high dollar amounts of money on plants to throw in here because honestly, it is a toss up. And alas guys, the elephant ear is in the pond and it definitely is looking vivacious, thick, juicy. It's leafing out and I do think that over time, the leaves instead of falling back and covering up a lot of the water are gonna reach out of the water because the sun rises on the side that they are aligned with. So the leaves are probably gonna arch a completely different direction as time goes on. But yes, the pond is done. We added a new fatty of a beautiful bluegill into the pond. Frogs are having babies all up in it. And if you guys did enjoy this update, please smash that like button. Let me know if you guys have any suggestions of what plants I should add next to this pond. I don't really know how much more room I can squeeze uh, plants into, but nevertheless, we will try our best and I'll catch you guys very, very soon with a brand new video. And uh, we're gonna add a lot more ponds because seeing all the frogs at nighttime come alive, come out, have babies and just overall have a ball is amazing. The frog calls also, bro, they'll keep you up at night to say the least. But until next time, man, remember, Earth is my planet. Earth is my planet. I will catch you guys soon. Peace. Songs, even a bloody life I roost And I'm in it to win it, so I'm somebody that you should get used to.